G'day guys, Elvin Pyle here from Adventuring Pals. Thanks for joining us on our big lap around Australia. This is part three and our final part of our Dirk Hartzog Island adventure. In this video, we'll be showing you the blowholes, a beautiful little bay full of sharks, we're catching fish, and stick around to the end to get the full stats and figures for the trip, including our cost, the kilometers, how much fuel we use, and our recommendations for your trip. So enough talking, and let's get into this video. Well guys, our third day here on Dirk Hartog Island, and this morning's been a real slow start, which is a good change of pace from the last few mornings. Uh, we've had a good big breakfast. Uh, we're about to head off exploring south this time. We're gonna go check out a place called Surf Point, and uh, I think a blowholes along the way too. So looking forward to that, enjoying our last full day on the island. As we hit the roads, we found the track condition was getting a lot better since our first day here. Thanks to the girls of the station grading the tracks. Guys, we're here at the blowholes on Dirk Hartog. It is so awesome, eh? So impressive. The best blowholes I've ever seen. Check them out. After witnessing the blowholes from close up, we decided to climb to the top of a dune to check it out from a good height. As you can see, that was quite unsuccessful. So Alex showed me how it's supposed to be done with a different line. So then I gave it a crack myself with a bit more speed. The view at the top was certainly worth the effort. And we even managed a family picture thanks to the borderless collies. Family pictures are hard to get when you're traveling by yourself. Soon though, it was time to head back down and move on to our next spot, Surf Point. Have a go at that blowhole going off in the background. We were so surprised to see the such a different variety of terrain on offer on such a small island that is Dark Hartzog. Bargain or two? <laughs> you two ready? <laughs> 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 nah, maybe not. When we got here, it was obvious to see why they call it Surf Point. And we had expected to go snorkeling in the century, but after seeing the amount of sharks that are in this little nursery, we decided to send the drone up instead. about as close as I would like to get with these guys in the water. The protected bay here at Surf Point is a shark nursery and a century, so no fishing allowed. So we went in search for a place to go fishing and have lunch. On the way we got a little bit lost, but eventually ended up back at the barge landing. We're just uh, fishing, having another sunset fish at the barge landing area for Dirk Hartog Island. And we stumbled across a great catch. The boys have been literally pulling one after the other. They're just cleaning all the fish now and hopefully we can showcase they've caught. Hey. I'm fishing on the bite side of day chai. How good is this? Yes, yeah. 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 Catch a fish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be yeah. nice. Right guys, so we uh, ventured down here to the south end today. This is where the barge uh, dropped us off. I'm not going until tomorrow, but we just came down here to have a bit of lunch, try a bit of fishing. 
we managed to collect a bag of rubbish which is always good and did we catch some fish well yeah we did man we caught 22 keeper fish it was an excellent session we were here for about four hours it was pumping it was so good fish after fish it was excellent keep the boys happy keep us all happy hey eh? it's gonna feed both of our families so that's very very awesome because as you're traveling if you can catch some fish it helps all that travel expenses hey eh? anyways um we're gonna head back now back to our campsite at the um at the homestead and um chuck on the fire maybe cook up some fish and just chillax on our last night on dhi Jaden, how good was the fishing today great i caught lots of what fish did you catch Whiting and a flathead one big one flathead I just put them back in. what about a long tom long tom uh, i didn't caught that long tom who caught the long tom <laughs> alex alex <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, but we did and we caught lots of whiting and flathead and even brim. Alright guys, we'll see you a little bit later and, at the campfire. And, and Ras! <laughs> and Ras, he reckons. Well, we really enjoyed our last night sitting around the campfire, feasting on the fish we just caught that afternoon. The next morning, it was an early start and we hit the tracks while it was still dark to get to the barge landing for 8 o'clock. Well guys, it's early morning, about 7.30. We're here at the barge site at Dirk Hartog. It's been a bloody epic trip, hey? Yes, Amazing, awesome. so worth coming here, guys. If you got the chance, make sure you do it. You can stay at the homestead and they've got the flushing toilets and showers, hot showers, and like a little camp kitchen if you're not into full bush camping like us. But it's just been hectic. Fishing here has been great. We've seen lots of sharks and turtles and whales and Oh, just amazing, eh? Hey? It's been epic. Yeah. It's, it's exceeded our expectations. We did lots of things, but there's still lots of things we couldn't do. Oh, yeah. We, we had three <laughs> nights, so four days on the island, three nights, and we probably could do with another week or two here, yeah, really, yeah. to really like soak it all in, hey? Mm. But, you know, we just do the best we could. Um, definitely we'll come back here one day. Look, we'll do a full um, bit more of a wrap-up video of, you know, how much fuel we used and caves we did and all that kind of stuff with um, the borderless collies back at camp so stay tuned for that but the adventures were not really over yet because we still got to get across the barge mm. and from steep point back to um, hamlin to find our caravan <laughs> see what it's like so stick around and um yeah we'll see what other epic or hopefully actually it's pretty um eventless and we get back without too much dramas but see what happens eh <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> Yo, let's go. bye Sick, such a good experience. It's so worth the drive in. The road to Steep Point was pretty ordinary. Yeah. And then uh, the roads on Dirk Hartog didn't get much better, did they? No, nah, not the start. Uh, but they improved a lot while we were there. They did, yeah. North of Louisa Bay. Yeah, Louisa Bay. Yeah. Louisa Bay was alright. So. Yeah. And then, so we had, um, what, four days up there? Four days, yeah, three yeah, nights. Three nights, four days, yeah. and I don't think it was enough, hey. No. Nah. We could do a few more days because we didn't really explore the western side much except for the blowholes. Yeah. Um, but yeah. we did, in our three days, four days, we did tick off a lot of things. Yeah, that day we did trip a lot. up to Cape Inscription and that, that was sick. Oh, yeah, it's good. Got up early and hit the tracks as early as we could and got up there for our morning coffee and had some brekkie <laughs> up around the lighthouse there, so. Yeah, good fishing there, unreal, good eh? Fish. Good fishing. Yeah, yeah, some of the best fishing I've done land based. Um, it was good. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll tell you guys a bit later because they're just packing up to go so I'll tell you guys how many k's and how much fuel I think you said you used 107 litres of fuel for the whole trip yep yeah so um, Alex used 107 litres of fuel I used 118 and I think it was 680 yep. k's did, did you keep a look of how many k's? Uh, no but yeah about 107 litres um, which was sweet with the long range tank and the ranger so yeah that was a 
That was a game changer, that was good. Yeah, yeah no, I good. missed my long range tank. I had to buy a fuel on the island at $3.30 a litre. But it was worth it because it meant like, I was just not even thinking about running out of fuel. And I had my two uh, 20 litre jerry cans when I used one of them up there. So, yeah, all in all, it was a great trip and it do it again. Great. Super good, I'd definitely recommend it. So yeah, get definitely. Alright guys, I'm gonna do the next part of my bar myself. So we'll say goodbye to Alex. Make sure you guys check out the Instagram channel, Borderless Collies. And while you're at it, check out our Instagram channel too, eh? Uh, Adventuring Pals. So yeah. Cool guys. Too easy. Too easy, brother. Tough. Thanks. <laughs> Alright guys, as promised, quick wrap up on our Dirk Hartog, the uh, stats and all that. Uh, don't mind me, I've just got to read it off my phone here. So yeah, like I said, um, I used 118 litres of fuel, uh, 680 k's from the um, Hamlin Outback stay to the whole trip and back. So that's not too bad. Um, total cost was, there was $22 camping for us at Shelter Bay, and then it was $734 for camping, barge, all the fees involved with Dirk Hartrick Island, not including fuel and our food and all that, that kind of stuff, obviously. Um, now, out of that money, I also paid like $55 for a insurance for a weather protection in case the um, barge doesn't run for wind or whatever reason. Um, then we'll get a refund or rescheduled. Um, I did get fuel on the island. I think I mentioned it already. It was $3.30 a litre. And you have to let them know a month prior to when you're going to need it to... Um, so they'll have fuel there for you now quite often you'll get away with just um just like if, if it's emergency you didn't plan for it but you end up needing fuel i have heard people that they that if they have the allocation they'll give it to you anyway um now the time allow time you should allow for it well our stay was probably like the minimum you could do it's uh three nights so only really three days because the fourth day we would at the barge side ready to go at 7.30. I think the latest barge is probably 9.30 anyway, so you really can't do too much on that last day. So yeah, three nights, uh, that was probably the minimum. Ideally, obviously, as long as you can, <laughs> would be awesome. You are allowed fires only at the homestead camping areas uh, because the rest of his national parks and they say no fires, so I'm not sure how that works. But anyways, yeah, we were allowed fires. Uh, we had our own fire pits and they also had allocated fire pits at um, each campsite too. Um, as far as time goes for traveling from Hamelin, uh, Hamelin Stay to Shelter Bay, it was three and, a, three and a half hours there. And on the way back, the roads were really good, like way better than on the way there. And uh, you probably, uh, you won't see that in the videos, so we don't have too much footage. Um, on the way back here, yeah, the roads were a lot better and it was about uh, two and a half hours for us to get back. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, that's about all I can think of to tell you guys. It was a really, really awesome trip. Highly recommend it if you can go. Uh, get the chance to do it, just do it. It's awesome. Yes, it's a bit expensive, but you know what? It's uh, one of those trips that I probably do too many times, eh? Um, anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the series. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and uh, share it along with someone you think might be interested. And um, thank you very much for watching it. Uh, and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.